Okay. Do you want to you see the slideshow then? Yes. I don't think it's been animated yet. I'm happy to do that. Steve, um, while we've got a minute, yeah. could you go over the next couple of meetings just so we're all shooting square on that? Yes. I may have screwed that up in my stuff. Mm. Okay. Um, we're, we're tonight at the, on the 6th. We have another meeting scheduled for the 12th at 7 p.m. if we need it. Then we have the meeting with the county council on the 14th. That's when we'll present this. Mm -hmm. And then the meeting with the um, county council on the 28th when we'll have, ask them to put on the ballot. Well, we'll ask them on the, the 14th to put it on the ballot. Then it should be on the agenda for the 28th. And the vote should be taken then. We're, we show we we'll meet on the 26th too, but I don't know if we we'll need to. I was just leaving up to the group. Okay, here we go so far. Can everybody see that? Is there a glare? Oh, it's good. Okay, let me see which button to push here. Here we go. Any? Maybe that arrow in the there bottom of oh, the. <laughs> Thank you. Too many arrows. Okay, here's the button? first slide. Yep. Thank you. And we haven't changed this from last time that I can tell. <coughs> Ryan, I don't know if you tried to change this slide. Is this Do you just want to skip ahead a couple? Well, we'll just see as it comes. Yeah, we'll okay. just. And so I changed my slide, kept the quotes in, made that bigger, took out the study. Just tell me when you want to go forward. And then yes, I so you got what I, this. we're good. Did I get it? You got it. Okay, so I tried to bullet this out, and I'll think of more reasons, but that was just shortening it down. And now, you say benefits of open space. Is this to the, for the community? Right, this is just okay. all of the reasons we can think of in the in to hit okay. them with it first. So you had suggested preserve agricultural yes. heritage of the valley, and so I put in north fields and other agricultural areas, but I noticed you were putting in those specific pictures, right, of specific areas. So maybe we want to combine it here. I don't know. It's just something to think about. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. I and hate then, to say it, but the more pictures we got that people can recognize, the more, more interest we're going to have. Yeah. Well, he's, help. he's got some great ones, and so... Um, this is something that I think you have, Tracy. Did I do? No. no. I think that's what you wanted, Steve, last time. What's that? Oh, wait, Steve wasn't here, but... Oh, you were here last time. You were here last time. I'm yeah. sorry. So this is what you had wanted, and I put it in from last meeting. What lands will we focus on? And then, Tracy, you'd added a couple I added a here. couple in there, yeah. And, you know, we'll, we'll think about this because people are adding different slides, and maybe this is somewhere to you combine. You think we need to be... As focus as to sprout the north fields, no, or just agricultural I lands. I would just stick with agricultural lands. Yeah, I would too. I think most people think of the north fields when they think of agricultural yeah, lands. I don't but we want, don't want to. I don't want somebody to think, well, they're just going to be worried about the north fields, and I'm worried about uh, right. right. Wallsburg. There's some people that worry about Wallsburg. Yeah. I mean, the pictures of the north fields. <laughs> we're backwards over there. Is <laughs> Wallsburg part of the keep going. Yes, yes. Portland's We have it going in the bottom. So we have the tools have to preserve heads. open space, and Tracy, you did a great job here reporting, I don't know which, I'm sorry, but you've added in more bullet points here that can be worked on or whatever you think. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want this will be four Never minutes. any legal mumbo jumbo. Yeah, we got that guy. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a very technical term. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I think we'll make this as clean and nice with the format, too. And then this was also yours. And that's what you gave to Ryan, so right? You skip yeah, so you can just skip that. We'll take that one out. So what, yeah. I, what I thought we could do is, if you wanted to, and now we'll go over some examples of how this would benefit property owners. Yeah. For example, well, estate planning and tax benefits. I just take this slide out and then just okay. go to the next one. Is this where you okay. inserted yeah. it? Perfect. This is, I think, the second one, the second property owner. We'll do this as soon as we're done. Just hang on. So I can make sure to get this right. And so then here's the tools to preserve open space. And this is where you'd put in specific places. Uh, no, it must have. You must have saved it 
when I was on these slides. Yeah, one second before. Yeah. So this is mine. This is examples. I'm not. I don't put a lot of text on there. But I'm going to go over Snake Creek Canyon, Wolf Which Creek one? Ranch. Yep. There's Snake Creek Canyon. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's Wolf Creek Ranch. And then uh, this is a. It's a that was. Um, pay Dollar Ranch. Uh, last it's Dollar. Okay. Last Dollar Ranch. And I like the first two because they're ones like I, I, I was on the same line. I wanted pictures that people could think I've been there, you know. Snake Creek Canyon, I think, is one of the best examples of preservation that we have in our community. It's happened since the 90s. It's about a thousand acres that has been conserved. Um, it's actually now been dedicated, I think, to the state. Probably largely, say, yeah, 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 largely. It, it points that picture. Have, have you thought about Center Creek? And the reason that I ask that, there's very few owners. It's a beautiful valley, the low end of it, it goes right up to the Forest Service, mm -hmm. and that, um, um, either now or later, was one that I was going to advocate for. As a general area, we ought to be looking at. That we ought to be looking at. Because it's a Gorgeous. beautiful And it's the same, uh, same sort of valley. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. I mean, this could have been, Snake Creek Canyon could have easily been developed. It wasn't developed because of these sorts of actions, right? The right people came to the table and said, let's preserve this. And it was a, it was a cooperative effort. But so it, I, it does more than that. Because it, it meshes between the state park and the Forest Service. Right. Mm -hmm. So we've got that added that 900 acres they saved there. Right. Just added to the 10,000 or 15,000 in the state park and the 15,000 in the Forest Service. So it was kind of the key, mm -hmm. the piece in the middle. Yeah. And I think this Snake Creek Canyon, that's why I, le why I led with it. I think it's the prime example of what we that this board hopefully can do, right? You find those critical areas that tie everything together for migration routes and everything else, and just the views and the beauty of it, you know, and, and to be able to save that. And that was a cooperative effort that did that. I mean, it let out, you know, there was public money, there was private money, um, there was donated property from from property owners um, that, that led. Mineral rights. Were yeah, mineral in. rights. Yeah, the, the mining company, the big four mining company mm -hmm. kicked theirs in. So there was, you know, it was a cooperative effort that led to the preservation of that canyon. I think it's huge. And I got rid of, got rid of a real pain in the ass, Kevin told me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't well, know you, about uh, that aspect yeah. of it, but. <laughs> well, we, that's a, one of our primary sources of water out of that tunnel. That's true, yeah, Heber Midway. Yeah, right? and he, he was trying to gain access to there. Okay. And when they bought, he actually owns a little bit in the bottom of this canyon. Okay. Going at where the powder house was. Right. Yeah, I knew that that's one of our water sources, but now that's interesting. So I think this is, you know, speaking of examples in the past, I wanted to lead off with a couple examples in the past of where we've been successful in doing this already, even without having, you know, public money specifically dedicated to it and a committee focused on it. Yeah. This has been done, but I think we can do a lot more of this. Another one we could add into there if we had any photos of it is Bonanza Flat. I thought about that, and then I thought, well, am I going to alienate people because it's Park City? Well, we, put money into it. we put money into it. I know we did. Yeah, and that was, I mean, it's really phenomenal what they were able to do there in nine months' time. You know, right? Maybe the way to think about it is, um, so this this is an example of taking out an end holding, basically, yep. in the middle of a government land. That's one set of processes. Another would be working with. A, uh, a bunch of partners to preserve a big piece of property somewhere. Which is my next one. In the valley. Yeah, yeah. Another one might be um, working with one of the cities for some important chunk. Or your, uh, which I still think is a killer idea, um, uh, on the um, uh, sewer land out there. So if we have examples that show the way different partners come together, of course, of course. Yeah. and while you guys are upstairs, we were talking about some of the time it's money, other time it's benefits to the landowner. Mm -hmm. And they show up with an open heart, and you try and work with them. And at this stage, it feels to me, just to give my opinion, that we want to, we want to get people thinking about different packages of things that they can use. We, exactly. These are just ideas. And we may never go back to Snake Creek Canyon, but we may go to another canyon where this can be similar. a template exactly. that can we can use with the Forest Service. And the benefit of having this committee and the fund that we're seeking is we can facilitate that, right? It's a one-stop shop. People can come in no matter what their situation is, and we're going to give them the mechanisms they need to kind of bring this yeah. about. I like that. But Bonanza Flat is another 
Yeah, another we'll, example. We'll certainly add that. Yeah, another example of taking out an, an in holding. Yep. Huge. <laughs> Huge yep. in holding. That idea of so we don't forget it. I wasn't sure how much time I had, so I limit. I actually had to whittle down to a couple of examples. So There's a lot of great Wolf examples. Creek? So Wolf Creek Ranch is, uh, and I, I've sorry, I've forgotten your name already. Oh, Cortland. Cortland. Wolf Creek Ranch, I think, is the second example you're talking about, right? A great piece of ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I love Wolf Creek Ranch. I could never afford to live there. But I drive through it all the time when I head up to ride my horses up above. You know, I use that forest access that they make very difficult. It's like gravel and steep, hard to pull a horse trailer. But, but <laughs> I can attest to what they say about it, right? What the, the conservation easement that is in place on there, you know, really locks up 13,000 acres of otherwise developable ground in our community, right? You do have, I think it's 60 something home sites, right? But each one's 160 acres. They can only build on little 10 acre parcels on their property, and the rest of it really little, is kind of returned. 10 acre parcels. Yeah, above 160. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th th it's, a, it's a small portion, and it's a key area. I mean, I, I drive through that throughout the year, and that is where elk are raising their young. You know, the, the elk herd and the elk population that's supported on that ranch, on that ground alone, is so impressive. And, and it's really an example of this, that property didn't cost, the, the, the dedication of that ground and that conservation easement didn't cost any of us anything other than maybe some tax income moving forward, right? Now the benefit to the landowner, which these landowners were intelligent Actually, enough to know was... Actually, didn't cost any tax income because we worked out a system where we valued the home at 10 acres. High enough that... The high enough that the, then everything else is on the green belt, just the same tax rates that we're always collecting on. Yeah, don't tell all the property owners anything about that. But, but, but it's, the, uh, it's the right idea though, right? I mean, and, and I do want to use this as a springboard to talk about the, one of the other services that we offer and how this is an example of that. A lot of people who do have, and, and, and it moves into the next one. So we can move to the last slide. I was going to talk about the whole, this is the, what is it, the last dollar ranch. And That's yeah. what it I says. I had a last dollar ranch on there, but right. as I was making edits, she downloaded it. That's she didn't give me 30 more seconds. <laughs> <laughs> already started. That was pretty great. <laughs> Where but is that? I, it's in. It's outside of Telluride, Colorado, which oh, is why I, I was going to say it's, it's very I similar didn't to. Didn't recognize where that was. Oh, okay. I couldn't find as good an example right here, but, no, I, but think I know. This is what we want to do more of, and and the the last dollar ranch, is a, a beautiful ranch right outside of Telluride. Of course, Telluride's done the same thing. The same thing's happened to tell you right agricultural ground. This has happened here, right? The value of the ground has gone way up. Right next to this ranch is a piece of property owned by um, I think, uh, Johnny Depp has a property right there. So does Ralph Lauren. He has a property right there. It's so, outside of Ridgeway. Yeah, yeah. So this this rancher obviously wanted to continue to ranch and wanted his ranch to hold together. And so in the 90s, he was one of the first ones to use a conservation easement to preserve his ranch and keep it from being broken up and developed out. And what he basically did, he was able to lock up the majority of the ranch in this conservation easement that promised you know, that it would only be used for agricultural purposes as a cattle ranch, stripped the development rights off of it, and that kept the tax burden low you know, and helped him deal with his estate planning and everything to ensure that this stayed a family ranch moving forward. So it's in, in the Western world, it's known as sort of one of these, you know, it was an innovative, an innovative move made by a cattle rancher to ensure that yeah. the ground would stay. And I think this is another service that we want to be offering here. I don't. Heidi Red did the same thing down in her ranch in yeah. Newspaper Rock. So they sold it. Indian right. Creek. Huh? Yeah, down in yeah. Dugout Ranch. Yeah, the Dugout, dugout Ranch. ranch. Is, yeah. Well, just a little so, tidbit. Um, so Don's ancestors owned that before the Reds did. Really? That's cool. So yep. the Nature Conservancy District and they give they give her a life estate to mm -hmm. run it. And you actually don't you can just sell the development right too. You don't have to sell the whole ranch. <coughs> That's one approach, but you can sell just the <coughs> development rights to like Utah Open Lands, for example, yeah. will come and hold it. Yeah. And then you still own the fee title, but the development rights are stripped, reduces your tax burden, makes it easier to pass it on. And you don't have to have, you know, a thirty five hundred acre ranch to do this. You can do it with a 40-acre parcel, a 40-acre gentleman's ranch right in the North Fields. But I think this is another tool that we really want to be using, that we could use more in our valley to preserve mm -hmm. open space for those farmers that 
want to continue to farm, yeah. right? And their kids want to farm. And I think you fall in that code where right? Steve and your son yeah. would like to keep raising hay, but can you, you know, if all of a sudden your property taxes are $40,000 an acre, you just can't do it. So anyway, that's what I was going to talk about. So first we're good then? Yep. Okay, so we have the bond text. I just added that before. Um, that's just what I sent to you guys mm -hmm. a few weeks ago on an email. So I just stuck it there. You know, we can change it to what we're going to ultimately decide to do, but that's just a general I think, context. I think we ought to change it to what we talked about. Yeah. Because if we get too many of the different concepts in there, we'll confuse them. Right. And maybe we can tell, <clears throat> we're talking about going out over a 20 year period for $20 million, $15 million bond. Go in five million dollar increments. But I wouldn't presume to alter that. I'm not an attorney, and I mean I'm just saying if you want to look at it or send it to Scott Sweat or something to, yeah, to go over. Office. I, I'm I just think, saying I think, he needs to maybe. I think it'd be best if we wrote it. Okay. And send it to him to edit. Okay. I can do that. If you guys want to send me the. Yes. It's on a Google. Oh, it's on the Google Doc? Yeah. I'll figure out the Google Doc. Can you have a Gmail account? Yeah. Okay. So, so just, I mean, it's already been sent to you, I Justin, think. Uh, I'll send it. I, I shared it with it's everybody. So. And What's your sure Gmail? Could edit, but tell me your email. It's J U S T I N, my middle initial J, my last name Keys, just like car keys, K E Y S at gmail.com. Okay, so Justin, Justin J, J Keys. At gmail.com. So, who found this guy and asked him to be on the committee? Like, I'm. Very impressed by your background and knowledge. Okay, so this is. Did you like lose a bet or something to have to serve on the council? No, one at some point you and I give the council some credit. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm still convinced there are more people living in our community that we don't know about yet. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. I buy hay from Steve. Wow. He's great. So. Is that really how you? Know? Uh huh. <laughs> you, you do. Just load, you just load my trailer. I technically buy it from your son, but you load the trailer every time. My cousin's Brandon Pewitt. I don't know where Brandon. For the county. Well, from where? He works for the county. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. If you want some better hay, that's the come best. Over the hill. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best hay in the valley, right there. <laughs> in the valley. That was a good, in the valley. In the valley. Oh, I should <laughs> <I> apologize. <laughs> no, Steve, you get. There were like three people there. The last time I was there, you were busy. So I had put in things from our last meeting in this, but there's question marks there too because we need to check on the figures. So, so let's just read it out loud. So the bond, let's see, cost the public, both residential and commercial. So we need to figure out those numbers. I think Spencer was going to take that, right? Yeah. It was, yeah. Okay. We um, probably, there's some language down here in that. Yeah. I put in what I thought we had said, but I think there's some question marks there because I wasn't sure on some Where's the question marks? Did I know? And can't the county clerk give us that information? <laughs> I mean, you you calculated this? No, I just wrote down what we discussed last time. Oh, okay. Time. Well, it's okay. nine dollars per hundred, but like that's what we came up with here, right, Steve? But um, it's not exactly because your primary homes go down fifty-five from fifty-five percent. I'll get you a spreadsheet on that. See, on a, if we had a $400,000 property yeah. and it was primary, the taxable value on that would be $220,000. And, and then you, if you supply, divide by 100000 that 2.2 times 9, that gives you this is kind of an elementary way of doing it for me. Nineteen dollars and eighty cents for a annual for a, a primary home valued at two hundred and twenty a taxable value of two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Now if it's a secondary home, the market value and the taxable value is the same. Mm -hmm. so nineteen dollars and eighty cents, so it's what is that? Nine dollars. Nine dollars per hundred thousand. Nine dollars per hundred thousand. That's value. Okay. For a primary. Yes. And it's the same 
it would be the same for uh, second. That's year. per That's million. Nine dollars right. per million. No, and we're looking at five million on the bond, right? That's nine dollars per hundred thousand. That's just on values. Homes. Per million dollars. Per right. million dollars. Okay. Of, of so bond. if we go to five million, five million. you come up with the nineteen point eight times five. So it cost a cost a four hundred thousand dollar primary home about a hundred grand. Hundred dollars a year. Different than we have here, but we really need to get these numbers down. Yeah, because well, now these are different. The office, the treasurer's office. <laughs> they told you. finally told me. Yeah. I, I, I think this this gives us a ballpark figure, and then we when we get the bond attorney mm -hmm. on board, he can give us this. But we got to have the exact number when we go out for the bond. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. We can give them our best the range. Best estimate. Range. Yeah. So it looks like, Heidi, that first bullet point called bond, cost of public, residential, commercial, just we might out. be able to just take that out altogether. Yeah. So I, do we have any point, oh, looks like I just skipped ahead a slide. Yeah. Do we have a point about commercial in there? So cost of bond, primary home, secondary home, and commercial would be so much per 100,000 valuation okay. for the $1 million of bond. Uh, so. We're proposing 15 million, but bond only for 55 million within five years. Get the county council to approve the bond. Okay, so this can be reworked. And, and Spencer brings up a good point: is if we go out for the bond, that nine dollars is probably right this year, but each year our, our taxable value goes up, and so that nine dollars will go down. It's You lock it. You lock in the interest rates on those up front. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so, yeah. Even where you're doing your fives. Yeah. The number of payers, just based on the number of payers, payers for as well as the value in, in growing, going up. Okay. We build new homes and red ledges left and right. Second homes. Yeah. Okay. Structural engineers kind of make a living. So we'll come back <laughs> to this one. So we have the questions and the picture, and I think we're done. So let's go back. To the beginning here, and do you want to add anything on this slide, Ryan, or anything nope. else? I'm good with it. Okay. We reviewed that last time. It just talked about why you are right why have open space. Yeah, I look at all this at interest. I came over, so. So. Okay, but you notice that we have um, a benefits of open space, two of them, and I'm thinking we can combine that second benefits of open space with some of these other slides, and so. Um, we have two benefits, and then we have what lands will we focus on. Right now, Tracy's saying, and let me make this a little bigger, everybody, so you can see it better. Not better. I love touch screen. Yeah. <laughs> it just, you know, anyway. Um, we have A20, um, historical agriculture land, but it looks like we're looking at maybe watershed protection or wildlife protection, too, with some of the examples that you talked about. So do we add that in here? And I will, I'll take it off here on uh, preserve agricultural heritage of our valley. We could increase that, right? We could mm -hmm. say agricultural heritage, watershed, wildlife protection, forest type lands. You don't want to say forest land because that's other government land, but forest say, type land. Say, you know, public access would be another one. Public access land? Because this is, I think, where we can combine it. Grazing. 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 The grazing okay. land, that would be a forest term that's not forest. Oh, All right, that's very good. Okay. You, you too, do you see that there's a value for us as having something in there about increased commercial agriculture? <coughs> the so small farm if they run out of money. No, I don't know. We, I mean, it's, it's not realistic to think we have. Um, commercial agriculture base here. Yeah. Grand Cole is probably the only closest thing we got to it because he's invested a million dollars in their cheese plant to make cheese. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. But I think we, to maintain the, the agriculture is it's the maintain, heritage, right? Yeah. As much as the. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we might think of adding that in right here. 
And we can do that, but let me just show you where I'm thinking of combining. So right here we have preserved agricultural heritage. We might say, plus these other types of lands. 